four males getting hit where it hurts really sucks. Unless you're Wolverine, and maybe we can fix this. After many conversations with my physiology and neurobiology teachers, this is not a video I ever thought I would be making. So let's understand why. For most males, getting hit in the grind is so painful. Why pain from this standard hit is not the same for Logan. To understand how to avoid the pain and injury from this awful situation. The male grind, or specifically the reproductive organs known as the testes, nuts, or special area, are among the most highly innervated organs that the human male possesses. Or rather to say, these guys are densely packed with nerve endings, causing them to quickly notice the slightest touch change and exactly down to the 1 to 2 millimeter range where the touch or kick landed. You see, most other outside areas or places that someone could get touched or punched on the human body, like a simple pat on the back or punch to the torso, can't as closely detect exactly where that touch or pain occurred, otherwise known as that organ or area's localization ability. In this case, the pain or hand being sensed by the skin on the back or abdomen, simply put, has less nerve endings per area of skin, making these areas less precise, only being able to feel where that touch happened within a broader area tracked down to something like several centimeters, making it something like 20 to 40 times less accurate than our special man area. Just to give you an idea, that's not to say that other areas of the body don't have the same sensing ability. Other external places like our fingertips, lips, and generally our faces are just as innervated. Even organs like our kidneys, heart, and cornea of our eyes have quite the array of nerves on standby to let us know when we're in trouble. They just have less. And beyond that, there's just one difference. All of these in some way or another have a way to protect themselves against damage, be it bone, layers of muscle, and above that, the other organs of your human body don't actually feel physical pain the same way as our hanging cherries do. Whenever someone like Logan takes a kick to the liver or punch to the gut, these organs will quickly fire off pain signals letting the brain know something is wrong. However, because these organs are visceral or located within the body, they have fewer nerve endings to tell them exactly where the pain has occurred. And added on top, the pathway the pain signals take are the same pathways that also transmit information for other body sensations like pressure and stretching, causing these pain signals to not only be poorly localized but also get mixed up elsewhere. So any visceral pain easily causes what is known as referred pain, or basically where pain felt from that liver punch or in the heart are felt somewhere else in the body. This is opposed to somatic pain, or pain felt in areas that are under your voluntary control, with these areas being external and falling under a different part of your nervous system, being your somatic nervous system rather than your autonomic nervous system that controls your visceral organs. So your somatic areas, being the skin and muscles on the outside of your body, are wired to feel and report the slightest sensation via pathways that are far faster and more precise in actually making it to the brain telling it what's happening. And unlike your organs, there's very little chance the information will get mixed up or referred elsewhere. And depending if the pain is felt in your fingertips, face, or back, the areas with more densely packed nerve endings will send an even bigger blast of pain signals to the brain on top of the already substantial message of pain the brain is about to receive, making pain felt in these external areas feel sudden and pretty darn sharp. This is where the testes rise above all others in terms of sensitivity of pain. Since they are in fact a organ, they are considered to be a visceral organ like the others, while at the same time also being somatic, in the way that they are part of an external structure existing on the outside, complete with skin and voluntary muscle tissue, and this means that they are the one organ, the one area of the body where a swift kick from a stick will 
absolutely send those ultra precise somatic pain signals to the brain, signals that are not only highly localized, but the male grind contains more nerve endings than even other areas of the body with the highest concentration of densely packed nerve fibers like the lips, making this pain signal one heck of a blast, but this area also contains visceral nerves like the internal organs. Visceral nerves that also send an additional signal to the brain that also get mixed up in the traffic of other messages causing a lasting referred pain to shoot into the lower abdomen, stomach, or even the lower back. And this pain can last for hours to weeks, unless you're Wolverine. As we all know, Wolverine's healing factor, or more so his immune system, is literally off the charts. Whenever a normal human sustains an injury like a cut to their soft tissue or damage to an organ, the pain signals arrive to the brain and the immune system boots up, dilating blood vessels to shower the damaged area with immune cells to clean up the debris, and proteins to rebuild. Normally, this process takes days to weeks as all the materials migrate and get to work. However, Logan's blood seems to not only contain massive amounts of the materials needed to start the process, but his cells have the mutation needed to spit out the proteins or broken down proteins known as amino acids on mass demand, making it so the moment he's injured, the site heals back to perfection. And for his internal organs, this means that he never has any lasting or otherwise visceral pain from the injury as it takes time to heal. But this may not actually be the whole story. And it does leave us with one problem. What about somatic pain? We obviously hear Logan crying out, screaming in pain from the copious amounts of stab wounds, nuclear bombs, and hot metal being pumped into him. Well, looking at Wolverine, the times that we actually do see him in pain, rather than just hearing him screaming towards his next target, are the times where the pain would be far greater than anything he's used to experiencing. And this is where we can learn something. The times we see Wolverine get punched, even shot, he is getting a signal sent from the affected areas to his brain. But they aren't necessarily painful for him to experience. You see, pain threshold is the minimum intensity at which an individual begins to sense or perceive any sort of stimulus as being painful. Similar to an experiment I ran in a lab where individuals would stick their arm in an ice bucket as I stared at them with a stopwatch, the more times you, I, or Wolverine experience something, an unpleasant feeling, sound, or in Logan and his brother Victor's case, who mentioned the bullets from the firing squad tickled, your pain threshold can raise, making it take far bigger and worse of a stimulus for you to perceive the experience as not only being near as painful, with this perception only getting lower and lower until you've experienced it so much that bullets are just a nuisance, but your pain tolerance gets a boost as well. Basically, from experiencing so much pain, Wolverine's brain has rewired itself with each and every experience, that he can also continue to take more and more of anything he does feel as being painful before stopping to seek any sort of relief. Similar to those who could hold their arm in that ice water longer than others. And for a man who has experienced centuries of war, torso blasting cannon fire, explosions, and at times being ripped apart to just his skeleton, he may just have the highest pain threshold and tolerance of any human ever. In comparison, making a kick to the grind feel like just another Tuesday in terms of how painful his brain rates the blow as. Perhaps the only time we do see Wolverine experience a shot to the grind as being painful is his battle with Mystique in the first X-Men movie, where Mystique, who is strong enough to kick people to death back flipping only to climb up a pipe in one heck of a handstand, kicks Logan so hard in the jewels that we hear the ping of his metal pelvis in order to cause his metal pelvis to sound off. This, my friends, would be the equivalent force needed to crush, rupture, or explode. The testes like a brick dropping on a grape, giving Wolverine a completely new experience, a far bigger somatic pain signal than his brain is used to receiving from the land down under. So how can all of us at least get better at perceiving pain at raising our thresholds for what we can take and tolerate 
tolerate for how long. Let me be the first to say it doesn't have to be anything brutal. Research shows that it's more so the act of doing hard things that you don't necessarily want to do. In fact, it's just these things. It needs to be exercise, cold showers, ice baths, heck, spicy food. Otherwise, pushing your mind through studying new information like the anatomy of the male grind for hours on end, far past where it's comfortable. In fact, the longer you're able to push your body through discomfort and the more discomforting that stimulus is, the more your brain will grow to match your new reality. Taking even more mental or physical stimulus for you to feel the same amount of pain the next time around. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved one fact for last. Wolverine has trained with individuals like Shang-Chi, who for a fun fact that as someone who has worked in healthcare I am not saying you should do, have deliberately undergone training where someone kicks you in the grind repeatedly, increasing the force of their kicks over time to raise your pain tolerance and threshold, even attaching bricks to their grind via a rope and lightly swinging them. And hey, if you want to know more science like how to get perfect sleep like Batman does, then check out these videos. Hope it was useful.